In September of 2012, Parkland School Division began a health and wellness initiative called the Youth Resiliency Project. The goal was to strengthen the four pillars of comprehensive school health across the district. They hired a full-time coordinator to support implementation at the Parkland schools, all 22 of which began on their own individualized wellness journey. Creating a healthy school community can't be accomplished overnight. A six-step cyclical process can be used to create effective change at both the district and school level. The idea of, a, of an eco-cycle uh, loop where you go through and you're going through to maturity and then coming back in and redeveloping new ideas would, is a fantastic method of, of planning that. By the time you get to the end of the six steps and you're going back through the cycle again, that community group will have asked the right questions and brought in the right people to make sure that what we're doing for youth is actually solving the problem that was originally outlined. We had a dream, which is part of our vision. Did we have a clear plan? No. But together we developed that plan and that evolved into the allowance, if I use that word, or the encouragement of each school to develop their own plan as long as we keep the ultimate goal in mind. The first part of my job was to go out to all 22 of the school sites and to visit with them and just have an informal conversation about what does health and wellness look like here. And then at the end of that conversation I said, would you be willing to provide me with a member of your school team who would be passionate about this topic? And that person is called a health champion. So now we have one representative from each school site who has taken this on to just be a trailblazer for this school division for this year. For some people this is going to be an introduction, for others they're already well on their way to integrating comprehensive school health into their school environment. So everyone's at a different stage, but everyone here is going to benefit in some way from the supports and services that we're bringing together throughout the province to support this school division. The biggest thing you need to know is that it's small steps. Okay, it's not a huge change overnight, you're not trying to change the world. So don't worry what the school down the road is doing, or whatever you hear today, that's not you. Your school is unique, it's individual, and you go down the path that you need to go for your students, for your community. So a lot of our schools come in and they say, oh, we need another psychologist, oh, we need another, if we just had one more soccer coach, if we just had two more teachers, and what they don't realize is if they better their practice through the six-step process of comprehensive school health, they're going to take a universal approach to health and wellness. That's the only way we're going to meet the mental health needs of our children nowadays. I come from a health background, so to see that the district school division at that level is actually willing and wanting to jump on board with health promotion and take this direction for all its schools uh, was very exciting for me. Under the umbrella provided by the division, each school identified a health champion to lead a team from their own community to support the project. In many schools, student voice played an important part in the process, as their support can be a key component when affecting change. Are you surprised by that stat that over 300 students out of 600 are saying that they're doing less than one hour of physical activity? I really wasn't surprised by that because all the mm. technology we're influenced by. From the beginning of the year it was basically we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into and what this would require of us. How we decided to start was first of all do an assessment, find out what is the health and well-being of our students according to our students and now we can pull in all of the different key players. We have a group of students that are already excited about getting involved in helping with this health and wellness piece. It, it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds in the next year. By communicating and brainstorming with their wellness teams, each school developed a shared vision for how their school community could become a happier and healthier place to live, learn, work, and play. I saw huge strides in the work that they were doing. They knew they had parent buy-in, they had students who were contributing to the conversation, and when students start to think about how could we change our school, how could we make it a better place as far as health and wellness goes, 
then the teachers listen. Gandhi once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Today, you guys all are the change and are the leaders of tomorrow, making the world a stronger and better place one step at a time. Thank you. Determining priority areas is about looking at a community's strengths and areas of need, then making decisions about what requires the most attention and what can be most easily achieved. Completing an assessment, such as the Joint Consortium for School Health, Healthy School Planner, with multiple stakeholders can help highlight these areas of need. To be able to do the assessment in the school, you'll be able to see where we're strong and to see where we need to grow and maybe pick an area where we can be successful this year and, and just get better work done. Now for the full workouts, if your knees are bent, you're going to be coming up, shoulders up, and reach and try to the left toe and then the opposite side. Okay. We decide to focus more on our staff this year uh, and then have, once our staff have bought in, then hopefully we have more staff that are on board for carrying the initiative over to our students for next year. I think as educators we have a huge ability to impact what's happening in the world around us. I remember going in grade two was when we first learned about recycling. Uh, by the time I had made my way to high school, we were in Edmonton producing 75% less waste that was going to our landfill. And that was simply by taking the initiative in the schools, educating our students, and I think by the board, Making it an initiative, it shows how important it is. It's not just left to the schools to make the decision on their own. We've got uh, names of students on all the fish uh, from kindergarten to grade nine. So there's about 680 fish up on the walls. And the teachers are, and support staff are going around and putting their initials on those fish that they feel that they already have a connection with. And then at the end, we're going to put those fish in the fishbowl and see which ones still need that feeling of connectedness. We were invited to kind of go start through a series of steps, six steps they called it. There was completing a health assessment. One of the areas that came back that said, hey, your healthy social environment maybe isn't as strong as you think it is. So we were kind of like, okay, hmm. It's easy to start saying, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. I don't know if that's a real obstacle, but it certainly is perceived until you can kind of go, okay, no, I need to sit down and do this. You know, really, at the end of the day, if we don't have time for relationships and attachments, what do we have time for? Using their identified priority areas, each school decided on the wellness initiatives they wanted to implement, both immediate and long term. Schools created a smart action plan with specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-related goals, and then shared these goals with both their school community and the district. It really takes the, the support from the top down and the bottom up, so you need the administrative support, but you also need the grassroots creativity there to come and meet that support. If it's coming all from the top, there's going to be a lot of resistance to change at the bottom and vice versa, and that's why it's so important that schools have that localized ability to make decisions and to create their own plans and things that will work from them. When we start to talk about student health and wellness, there is a focus on physical activity and getting our kids moving and diet and nutrition, which is extremely important, but it's bigger than that. And when we looked at those four pillars after we did the assessment, we felt one of the areas that we wanted to spend a bit more time and focus was on the social emotional aspects. Once every week we come here or they come to our school and we do half an hour of like their homework or whatever they need help work on. Like they're helping children succeed and stuff and helping them stay in school. Okay, that's I didn't have this like opportunity when I was younger, so I thought maybe if I give someone else the opportunity to have it, it might like teach him something for later on in his life and yeah. I never knew that. Well that's why. Now you know. A comprehensive action plan is easier to implement, 
especially when it includes a tracking and monitoring process. These school sites each implemented their healthy ideas and recorded some amazing results. We find that a lot of our kids come to school um, either hungry or they haven't slept um, at night for whatever reason, so it's really hard to get them going in the morning to start that learning process. So at least if they have something, like a smoothie, at least it gives them a bit of a jump start to start the day. I've always in the back of my mind wanted to spearhead a revamping of our hot lunch program, but being a teacher you're always so busy with things and things kind of fall through the cracks and so coming to this it just kind of dawned on me like I really need to do this now and this is a perfect opportunity to help push that. The kids, they're great, they, especially at the younger age. When you explain to them and show them and educate them the reasons behind being healthy, they get it. And then I'm getting the calls from the parents being like, how did you make my kid eat this? They don't like vegetables. They want to go grocery shopping with me now. But it's as simple as that. They're the, the source behind this and it being successful is having the kids be the ones that pass on the education. So this year I'm in grade nine and I joined the PALS option group last term and we work with the younger children. We teach them activities so that they can be active. The smaller kids think it's the best thing in the world. You need to be active or it's just like you don't have enough fresh air and that never feels good. It makes you grouchy. I used to be kind of a shy person then since I joined PALS I've kind of opened up to a lot more. We are running a program called Campfire Songs. It is run by two retired teachers. I think all schools have an abundant amount of resources when they look to their community. Um, and that's where we started from, is going out to the community. And one thing I learned is there's so many people out there who will volunteer their time, they just need to ask. So getting that buy-in was huge, and it was just taking baby steps. Can I say from the first meeting, very honestly, it was that overwhelming sense of how am I gonna begin this? But I think um, just taking it down to a first step basic level of, okay, this involves the children, so let's do something that they will enjoy. I think really it kicked off when we introduced the produce passport. Basically, you bring a fruit and you eat it, and if it has a sticker on it, you um, put it on. I'm more interested in eating fruits and vegetables now than all the candy and stuff. For breakfast, you have to eat a healthy and lunch healthy. So you get healthy mind and so you can do math and you can do all the stuff that we do in school. We supply the three schools with the fruits or vegetables that they, they ask for that week that the kids are gonna eat and then they get the, the UPC or PLU and stick it in the passport. My belief is that kids will learn. I, I think that that's their nature. It's the other stuff, like not coming to school with breakfast, not eating healthy. And I think that once they are emotionally, physically fit, they just love to learn. A lot of kids were staying in at recess and we needed to sort of have an emphasis on how to get them back outside playing. It actually took a lot more effort than we expected uh, because kids love to just kind of sit and play their video games and things like that. Our staff is very, very good at running intramurals and sports teams and things like that, but there's a lot of other kids who aren't into that kind of organized sport. We have to find ways to get them, keep them active. We have been uh, training some of our kids to lead the active recesses outside. So let the older kids learn the games and then they can bring them out to the kids. I think with well, all teachers, most teachers, they have so much on their plate already that if they have to do a whole a lot of extra, it's like, no, forget it. And I feel the same. So it's kind of just been like, okay, if you can do a quick brain break, and tell them to get up, do it, and then sit back down. If you can even do that once or twice a day, just try it and give me like three weeks. They're like, really, you're gonna get them up, get them moving, and then try to calm them back down? So I've done it with my class now for two months. My kids are actually very calm, and they're getting a lot more work done. Just try it. And so they kind of, okay, we'll try it. And then they actually started noticing a difference. Okay, the kids can calm down. We are getting more work done.
A key step in the process is taking time to reflect on the results and celebrate the successes. By considering what was effective and what was not, a continually developing culture of wellness can be created. A lot of the teachers say that the highlight of their day is when they get to work with each other and find out what's going on in other school communities. So those health champions meetings are a great time for collaboration, sharing ideas. And I think that's what we set them up for, the health champions at the last health champions meeting is, okay, look into year two, what do you need from us? What's the plan? Where do we go from here? And how do we combat some of the things that were challenging for you this year? We know that we're in this for the long run and I know that I'm sticking around until I feel like this project is not a project, it's just the way that things are done. And we want to make sure that the community also buys in on that level. And until we feel really confident that we have that buy-in from all sorts of different levels and that we've shaped and shifted the culture of health and wellness in all 22 of our schools, I don't think anyone is going to decide to put this on the side of their desk. It's a really hopeful movement. People really want to talk about it. They want to care about kids on this level or they wouldn't be in these fields of health or education. So when you say the sky's the limit and you actually give people time, creative people who love kids time to do work, they do it and that's pretty cool.